Hello, I'm Todd Spatafor, and this is another Spatacular Thing. The previous two videos, I've introduced the Go programming languages and the basics of programming for the web. In this video, we'll get a little deeper into the woods of concurrency and advanced features like JSON. We will complete this video by building a demonstration API. So fire up your editor of choice because this is Go Web Development, the future of backend. In the first video of this series, I briefly touched on the subject of concurrency. Go routines and channels are the flavor of threading in Go. Let's think about this for a minute. Imagine a busy restaurant kitchen. In a traditional single threaded kitchen, you have one chef that does everything. Take orders, chop vegetables, cook and serve the food. It's the food truck of threaded applications. In contrast, Go routines are like having a team of chefs, the kitchen staff. Each one can work on a different task concurrently. One chops vegetables, another cooks the steak. They all work independently, but towards the same goal, getting the food out to the customers. Go routines are lightweight, meaning you can have many of them without significantly slowing down your program. They are cheaper to create and manage than traditional threads. Okay, that takes care of the kitchen, but how do they communicate with each other? They don't just randomly grab ingredients and start cooking. They need a way to communicate. Channels are like the order tickets and serving window. When an order comes in, it's written on a ticket and passed to the appropriate chef. In Go, you send data through a channel. When a chef finishes a dish, they pass it through the serving window to the waiter who delivers it to the waiting customer. In Go, you receive data from a channel. A Go routine is a lightweight concurrent function execution. You launch a Go routine by simply adding the Go keyword before a function call like this. This starts my function running in a new Go routine. The main function continues executing without waiting for my function to finish. Channels are typed conduits you use to communicate and synchronize concurrent Go routines. They allow you to send and receive values of a specific type. Just remember that Go routines are the workers and channels are the communication pathway that allow them to work together efficiently and safely. They are fundamental to writing concurrent and scalable applications in Go. In the second video, we covered the default serve mux. It's limited to simple pattern matching. It's good for basic routes, but it lacks flexibility for more complex patterns. You can't easily extract variables from a URL like users slash ID. You'd have to manually parse the URL. The built-in router requires more boilerplate code to use middleware. It's difficult to group routes into logical groups, and there's no subrouting. Creating nested routes is cumbersome at best. So what are you to do? If you run up against the boundaries of the default serve mux, the answer is third-party router called Gorilla Mux. Gorilla Mux supports a wide range of URL patterns, including regular expressions, path variables, and wildcard matching. Gorilla Mux makes it easy to add authentication, logging, and request validation with its middleware support. Okay, enough sales. How do we use it? First in your code, you add this line to the import section. Then to run the code, you first have to go get the Gorilla Mux code with this command. Finally, in the code, you have something like this. Notice in the user handler function how easy it is to extract the user. Also notice that in the HTTP listen and serve function, we are no longer passing nil as the second parameter. One of the most common tasks that you will have to deal with is handling JSON. Like everything here, Go makes it easy to deal with. There's marshalling data to JSON and unmarshalling from JSON into data. Let's look at marshalling data to JSON first. To convert Go data structures into JSON format, you use the json.marshal function. There's a lot of interesting things to look at in this code. First notice we added the encoding JSON import in. JSON encoding is part of the standard library. It wasn't an afterthought or shoehorned in later. It's a first class citizen. Notice that in addition to the type for each member of the person struct, there's also metadata telling the system the custom key name in JSON. Then you can see the single line of code required to marshal the data structure into JSON. It is then printed out to the console, but it could easily be sent across the wire as a response to a web request. Unmarshalling is just as simple. You'll create a data structure that will match the JSON and unmarshal, like this. The first line of the main function creates the input JSON, but this could easily be a POST or PUT request from HTTP. Finally, we unmarshal the data by passing in the JSON data as, and a reference to the person struct. 
simple, right? I'm reminded of the early days of XML where you had to use SAX or DOM and the trade-offs that we had to make, not to mention the tomes of code we'd write to encode and decode it. Go makes JSON so easy. To-do lists are a bit cliche, but there's a reason that people use them for demos. They're a small known domain. So let's look at a simple backend example with Go as our language. First, let's add in the package name and some import statements, including Gorilla's Mux. Next, let's add in a struct to contain a single to-do item. Then we add in a slice to hold our list of to-do items. On to the handle functions. First, we do a get to-dos that will return all of the to-do items, and a get to-do that looks for a to-do ID and returns that one item. Next, we have the all-important create to-do that is called to add a to-do item. Just two more functions, one for update and another for delete. And finally, we write our main function using the Gorilla Mux. Now that we have it coded up, let's test it with the REST client in VS Code. Here in VS Code, we're going to test our to-do API. First, we're going to do a post to create a new to-do item. And that returns 200 OK with a JSON representation of the new to-do item and its ID of 1. Let's do that two more times. And you can see on each of those, we got a 200 OK with an ID of 3. Well, ID of 2 and then 3. <laughs> now we can get all of our to-do items with the to-dos get request. And you can see here we have our three to-do items. In a put request, we can change the completed value from false to true on ID number 3 by clicking this. And here it returns item number three with a completed equals true. Finally, we can do a get request for an item that isn't there, and you'll see we get a 404 not found. Next, we can delete the first item in our list by saying delete to do's one. We can send the request and we get a 200 OK on it. Finally, let's do a get request to get all of our to-dos, you can see that our first to-do item is missing and that our third to-do item has a completed of equals true. So there you have it. We've covered routing with Gorilla Mux, handling JSON with ease, and even built a basic to-do list API. Go really shines when it comes to building backend services. It's fast, efficient, and surprisingly simple. If you're new to Go, I hope this video has shown you just how powerful and approachable it can be. Don't be afraid to experiment, build your own APIs, and see what you can create. Speaking of building things, next time we'll be diving into HTML templating in Go. We'll learn how to separate our logic from our presentation and create dynamic web pages. Get ready to see your backend come to life with a front end. Please subscribe and ring the bell so that you'll be notified when more videos come out. Thank you for watching. You can find me on Blue Sky, Threads, GitHub, and the web using Spatacly as the name. See you in the next video.